Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to share with you a story that I found when I was doing some research about the Chris Watts case. And this is from Denver, Colorado. It is Robert Feldman, age 53, and his wife, Stacy Feldman, age 45. I found some similarities with this case and Chris Watts case. Just a few. And I just wanted to tell you about this story to see what you guys think. Is it possible that Chris or Nicole saw this story prior to the death and murder of Shanann and her children? In this case, Robert is accused of murder in the death of his wife, Stacy. Robert has been charged with first-degree murder for the 2015 death of his wife, Stacy Feldman. Her death had originally been classified as undetermined. However, a prosecution expert has testified that there is evidence that Stacy was strangled and that evidence has led to a three-year-long investigation and led to the arrest of Robert Feldman in 2018. Feldman is currently free on $1 million bond. Stacy Feldman died on March the 1st, 2015. Robert reported he had found his wife unresponsive in the bathtub. She was pronounced dead a short time later. This story was in the Denver area newspapers and news in March of 2018. Here, some of the similarities with the Chris Watts case are is Robert Feldman was having an affair with a lady he had met on Tinder. Both had two small children, the Feldmans and the Watts. This was also a strangulation of the wife. And the victim, in this case, Stacy Feldman, was straddled when she was murdered. The murderer was straddling her when he strangled her. And there was also some indication that she might have been suffocated. And the only thing different with the Watts case is that instead of the way Chris acted, um, nonchalant, just, you know, go ahead, search my house, non-caring. Uh, this guy, Robert Feldman, was acting completely opposite of that. He was acting um, wailing, um, overacting actually, to the point that it drew attention to him. And this was in the newspaper. So is it possible that either Chris or Nikki saw this in the news at the time? And if they had indeed planned this and premeditated it, they decided, hey, we need to not do what this guy did and draw attention to myself by acting hysterical and wailing and carrying on. We'll just act, you know, like oh, you know, everything's fine and act calm, cool, collected instead of the bawling and squalling. Okay, so that's that. Now let me get to some more of the facts. Just hours before Stacy Feldman's death, she found out that her husband was having an affair with the lady that he met on Tinder because the mistress mistress had found her number and called her and told her that they had had sex. Firefighters said Feldman was so overdramatic and purposely not cooperative to the point that they had to request police assistance because he was yelling, wailing, and getting too close to his wife to where it was interfering with their ability to render aid to her. The lead detective suspected foul play from the beginning because the way Feldman was reacting. He appeared to be overacting in an effort to avoid being questioned. Um, one of the firefighters also said that um, Feldman had just was just hysterical, yelling, welling, and just completely interfered with their duties. The district attorney's office hired an outside medical examiner who specializes in domestic violence related to strangulation and suffocation injuries, which led to Feldman's arrest. After 
three years. The murder happened in 2015. It was undetermined. After they hired this uh, medical examiner, they were able to arrest him. I just wanted to bring this story to you, not because it has anything actually to do with Chris Watts, but I just found it interesting that it was in the area, would have been in the news, and and just a few things about the affair, the strangulation, the straddling, and then how starkly different reactions you got from Robert Feldman here versus Chris Watts. They were totally opposite. Feldman drew attention to himself, and Chris, in a way, did draw attention to himself un unintentionally by being so weirdly calm unnaturally calm I just want them back bring them back come back nobody acts like that when your kids are missing if they're safe then they're safe no nobody acts like that then with this case um, I, I wasn't premeditated at all because the wife found out just hours before she was murdered um, just by chance, the mistress had looked her up because she thought that the guy was lying about being divorced and she wanted to find out for herself. So she first emailed and then called Stacy Feldman, who confirmed, yes, that they were indeed still married. And she had indicated that he had done something like this before he had fooled around before. So I'm assuming Stacy then confronted him after she was told by the mistress and he freaked out, flipped out, and strangled her and tried to make it look like an accident. He actually tried to make it look like she had fell in the shower and had um, died, died in the shower. They had supposedly found her with the, sh the water still running, cold water running, and he probably did that on purpose, so trying not to be able to determine the exact time of death with the cold water running on her for that period of time. And... Um, yeah, I think he just flipped out and because she confronted him with the affair that he was having with his little Tinder, Tinder date. And that is the story of the Feldmans. It's really, really tragic that the, these stories keep happening. And so many in Colorado. It's so strange. Well, thanks for listening, guys. Bye.